In this video, we'll look at Preserve Alpha and its non-destructive counterpart, Alpha Inheritance. Preserve Alpha, we've already mentioned it in the training at the start, I think. This is this little icon at the top, and you can toggle it on and off with the slash key. It allows you to paint inside of a layer's existing pixel. In other words, it allows you to use your layer's content as a transparency mask. I have it active here. You can see it with the little icon at the top. I'm selecting the color and I'm able to start painting inside of it. I can paint my light and shadow. But the thing is, it's destructive. That is to say, I've painted inside of my colors layer. Let's say I want to keep the green base color, but the shadows, I want to make them a bit more purple. I can't use hue saturation to recolor the shadows directly. And there's more than that, actually, that I want to do. I'd like to paint both the color and the little bell here and to add a shadow to both of them at the same time. There is one way we can do that, and that's with Alpha Inheritance. On your layers, you have a little alpha symbol, and that symbol allows you to toggle the alpha inheritance of that layer on and off. Let me show you. I'll add a new layer, I'll deactivate Preserve Alpha first, and I'll start painting large blue strokes like these. They go a bit everywhere, aside from the dog's moustache, simply because I added a transparency mask. Look at what happens if I toggle the Alpha Inheritance on. The new blue strokes I've added are getting clipped to the two existing layers inside of the group, and only inside of that group. Doesn't take into account the whole dog here. If I move that layer into the larger group, it will clip to the whole dog because it will clip to the Alpha of the whole group. When you click that button, and the little Alpha is crossed, it means that this layer won't have its own alpha channel. It will use the transparency channels of the other layers in the same group, or inside of the document if it's not in a group. I'll erase the content of my layer, and it's clipped to the bell and the color. And I'll try to paint the shadows of my character. And then you're going to see the real strength of it all. I'm going to set that new layer to multiply. And now look at what happens. I'm able to paint the shadows of both the color and the bell at the same time. And I've done all that on a single layer. This means that using this feature, we can paint global shadows on top of a whole character. I'm going to set the layer to multiply again. And I'll pick a light brown tone. Very light. So it's not going to add too much shadow on the character. And then I'll start painting with the airbrush. And thanks to that, I can add global shadows that take into account the whole character, but that don't go outside of it. The transparency of my game sprite is being respected. This will allow you to work that much more efficiently. This is a great system in Krita that's fairly unique, actually. In general, in other programs, you get clipping masks, which allow you to clip a layer to another one below. But in Krita, the Alpha Inheritance can apply to groups as well, to any kind of layer and any type of combination. And you will inherit from multiple layers at the same time. You will not have to clip to a single layer at once. For instance, I have my group with the color of the dog. If I click on Alpha Inheritance, you will see that it clips to the silhouette of the dog in here. I use clipping masks to create that potion study really, really fast. The layer hierarchy itself is fairly complex, but here is how I worked. I created that base layer with a base color, a white tone, and then I added the cork on a new layer. You can add it in a new group and set the alpha inheritance off on that group. I can paint whatever color I want outside of the layer. It won't work. It will only paint inside of my bottle. I then did the same with the liquid. And last but not least, 
I did the same with the label at the bottom. Because I did that and I have groups, I can, for instance, with the cork, add a new layer in the core group and toggle the alpha inheritance of that new layer off. I'll just brush in a little for you to see the result. So I'll start painting my cork here. My new layer uses the alpha channel of the cork and the whole group itself uses the alpha channel of the bottle at the bottom. So I can make very complex hierarchy of layers with alpha inheritance and force them to all use a base layers alpha channel. This is really good when you want to get crisp edges like here with the bottle. I can do the same with the liquid. I can add a new layer and toggle the alpha inheritance of that layer off. I'll then pick a darker color to start painting the shadow of my liquid. It only paints inside of the liquid. I can't paint outside, which means that I can very easily shade the edges of it. And same thing with the bottle at the bottom. I can add new layers and I can start painting with darker grays around the edges to start adding some shadows to them. Then for the real bottle, you can start to see the bottleneck in there, which is that I have to paint part of the glass in front of the cork and also in front of the liquid. To achieve that, I have a more complex setup in my original document. But I think you can see the strength and the flexibility of that system. One last thing I want to show you. You can create quick clipping groups. There's a shortcut for that. If I add some kind of, let's say, a knee strap, I have my layer selected. If I press Ctrl Shift G, it's going to create a clipping group. So it will put my layer in the group and it will add a new paint layer with the alpha inheritance toggled off. So I can straight away start to paint the shadows non-destructively. That shadow layer is a layer of its own. I can remove it at any point in time. I can change its opacity and I can change its blending mode without affecting the layers below it.